Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to a new episode of Roundup. We've been busy this week, gathering exciting reports for you from our studios around the globe. Before we all do that, Jangi, let's begin by taking a look at some of the important headlines from this week. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has been ousted from power after losing a no-confidence vote. Sunday's vote took place after the country's Supreme Court ruled in favour of opposition parties and said that Mr Khan had acted unconstitutionally. The opposition coalition leader, Shahbaz Sharif, who worked to depose Mr Khan, won the support of a majority in parliament and will now form a new government that will remain in place until the next elections in August 2023. A man accused of unleashing a barrage of gunfire on a subway train in New York City will be held without bail until trial on federal terror charges. 62-year-old Frank James appeared in court on Thursday for allegedly violating a law barring terrorist attacks or other violence against mass transit systems. Mr James did not enter a plea. His lawyer requested a psychiatric report. Boris Johnson has promised to set the record straight over what he has told MPs about lockdown parties in Downing Street. The Prime Minister initially told them no rules had been broken, but he is now among more than 50 people who have been fined by police. This has led opposition parties to accuse him of misleading Parliament. According to government rules, ministers are expected to resign if they knowingly mislead MPs. Some asylum seekers who cross the channel into the UK will be given a one-way ticket to Rwanda under new government plans. The pilot scheme will focus on single men arriving on boats or lorries. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the £120 million scheme would save countless lives from human trafficking. An Egyptian swimmer has broken two world records after losing his leg in a motorcycle accident in 2015. Omar Hagazi broke the Guinness World Records for longest distance swam underwater with one breath and longest distance swam underwater with one breath with fins. Jangi, have you ever wondered what Easter really is about? You know what, I've not really gone into too much detail to try and figure out exactly what it's about because our first report we look into its origins and what it commemorates and the perspective of Emily Muslims in relation to the celebrations of Easter. You know what, that sounds really interesting. I think we can all learn a thing or two about what we as MD Muslims should be doing during Easter. Spring is here, and with it, so is Easter. We've all heard of Easter. Most of us even get holidays for it. In fact, because of it, I'm off school right now. However, many of us don't actually know what it is and why people celebrate it. I'm not sure I can tell you everything you need to know, so let's find someone who can. So what is Easter, and why do people celebrate it? So Easter is a festive celebration of the Christian faith whereby they commemorate and celebrate the death of Jesus on the cross, which is known as crucifixion. And they also believe that he was brought back to life, which is resurrection. So the, they believe that this happened during these days, and that's why it's celebrated on these particular dates. But if it's a religious event, why are eggs and rabbits used to celebrate it? Yeah, that's a very f funny thing. Uh, it's actually not part of Christian faith as such. But it's a tradition that started much later. It goes back to the 13th uh, century uh, and it was initiated in Germany. So they had this ideology that there was this rabbit that would lay out these colourful eggs. And the reason why they use this hare or, or rabbit is because it represented new life. So connecting that to the resurrection of Jesus Islam, they had this link between new life and Jesus coming back I never knew about the rabbits. However, with all the celebrations around us, as Ahmadis, what do we believe about Easter? So the Ahmadiyya faith uh, is very clear about Jesus al Islam and what happened. So we do believe that Jesus al Islam was put on the cross, but we don't hold this uh, faith that he died on the cross. We believe that he was saved by Allah Almighty. And according to the prophecies and the promises of Allah Almighty, Hazrat Isa al Islam, or Jesus peace be upon him, he travelled to Kashmir and he died at the age of 120 years. Uh, we don't believe in resurrection because that is against the laws of Allah Almighty. Uh, Quran is very clear that a person who dies, he never comes back to life. Okay, so we don't actually believe that Jesus al Islam was resurrected after crucifixion. So, what should we do as Ahmadis while Easter is being celebrated around us? So, it's a very fine line. I think 
being respectful to what the others believe is one thing, but being part of it is another. And being part of it also has that connotation that you're also celebrating it. And of course, we don't celebrate that because we don't believe in it. So I think the best thing is to be very clear about yourself that we don't celebrate it, but we respect others. And also, uh, it's important that we also pray for Jesus as Islam, especially uh, because they celebrate him going on or they commemorate his going on to the, uh, onto the cross. So we should pray for Jesus as Islam, for his high ranks, um, and that's what we can do, but being part of the whole culture of celebrating Isa, that's incorrect because the Holy Prophet ﷺ in fact stated that those people who um, somewhat copy people of other faith, it's like they are part of them. So it's important that we differentiate ourselves from, from the tradition of Easter. Jazak Manuruddin for this informative report. We hope you have learned something useful and now know what Isa really is about. Now, let's go to our summary recap into our beloved Hazur's Friday sermon from this week. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. Last Friday, Hazur continued to speak about Hazrat Abu Bakr, anhu, the first Khalifa of Islam. Did you know that Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, received the honorific name of Abu Bakr only later in life because of his love for camels? Abu means father in Arabic and Bakr means camel's calf. During this week's sermon, Hazur mentioned how Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, remained resolute in the face of tremendous challenges. Beloved Hazur, Ayyud al bin Asr al-Aziz said that the promised Messiah salam, has also affirmed that the apostates during the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, had taken up rebellion. Due to this, Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, was very saddened by what had become of these people and would weep in prayer. His daughter, Hazrat Aisha anha, describes that Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, witnessed all kinds of rebellion at the outset of his caliphate, such that if the same burden had been placed upon mountains, they would crumble. However, with the help of God Almighty, Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, stood firm as he removed all of the threats which had presented themselves. Hazur said that during this wave of rebellion, Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, deployed various envoys. There were those who had turned apostate and refused to give zakat, but then there were also those who adopted rebellion and had started killing Muslims. Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, decided to obtain intelligence regarding the movement of this group and so he gathered the Muslim army and set out from Medina. Hazrat Ali anhu, requested Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, that rather than accompanying the army himself, he should send someone else in his place for fear of something happening to him during battle. Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, accepted this suggestion and instructed the army to go forth as he returned to Medina. During this week's sermon, Beloved Hazur said that during this difficult time, Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, penned a letter for all those residing in Arabia, stating that he believed in that which was brought by the Holy Prophet wasallam, and all those who deny that message are disbelievers. He said that the Holy Prophet wasallam, was sent to this world with truth as a bearer of glad tidings and as a warner. Those who accepted him were bestowed the divine light of guidance. Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, then explained through verses of the Holy Quran that after fulfilling his responsibilities, the Holy Prophet wasallam, was to pass away just as everyone must pass on, so too would he. Hazur Ayyud al bin Nasr al-Aziz said that Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, also wrote a letter addressed to each one of the leaders assigned to the 11 groups he sent. He instructed them to adopt righteousness and that they should not fight upon reaching their assigned destination. First, they should invite them to the faith and to fulfill the duties. However, if they saw that the people stuck to rebellion and fighting, then they should not hesitate to take up their weapons in order to bring the injustices and cruelties which they had been doing to an end. Dear brothers and sisters, this was just a very brief summary of last week's Friday sermon, which was filled with many interesting stories and incidents.
We hope you are able to hear the full sermon, which can be found on mta.tv. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah for enlightening us on this week's sermon. Up next, we've got a special report looking into the many physical and mental health benefits that come along with fasting. Well, in this case, Jangyu, did you know a proven benefit of fasting is improved sleep? I feel like I may have known that one, but anyways, for the benefit of our viewers, let's find out a bit more about that from Kashif. Less food, but better health. Did you know that Ramadan has lots of health benefits? Going through a whole day, let alone a whole month, without food from dawn to dusk is really tough, but the benefits to your health are huge. Fasting in Ramadan is basically a month-long detox which cleanses your body of harmful toxins. During this month, those toxins which are stored in your body sweat are dissolved and removed resulting in a natural process of detoxification. Within days of beginning your fasts, there are increased levels of endorphins in your blood, resulting in a higher level of alertness and better mental well-being. And because fasting has shown to improve brain function, now is the perfect time to memorize the Quran and the Qasida. Fasting can even help clear the skin and prevent acne, it also gives the digestive system a rest so that it can repair and heal and the body can focus its energy on regeneration. Experts have also found that restricting food intake during the day can help prevent health problems such as high cholesterol, heart disease and obesity. It can also help with mood, concentration and energy levels. But if you are unwell, you shouldn't fast as people who have trouble fasting are exempt. This includes pregnant women, children, people traveling and those who are sick. During Ramadan, we're encouraged to break our fast with dates, which is a healthy and nutritious thing to eat for if died. Dates have high levels of fibre, potassium, magnesium and B vitamins. They are also rich in iron, folic acid and calcium along with numerous vitamins and minerals which help physical health a lot. There are lots of other benefits associated with Ramadan as well. That's why Allah says fasting is good for you if only you knew. To get the best results though, you should eat healthy, balanced meals and not overeat. That's why the Quran says, eat and drink, but be not immoderate. And the Holy Prophet wasallam, said, you should never eat to your fill. Instead, you should fill your stomach with one third of food, one third of water and leave one third for air. It turns out that the old adage of eat less, speak less and sleep less is true after all. Jazakallah Kashif, now it's time for us to fly all the way to Australia where Yasser is back with yet another exciting report. This week on the occasion of World Book Day, we dive into the world of literature and learn more about the importance of reading quality books that help us grow in knowledge. Books come in all shapes and sizes. There's big books, small books, Fun and interactive books like these ones and books that tell stories. World Book Day has been organised by UNESCO since 1995 to help promote the reading of books all around the world. World Book Day is celebrated on the 23rd of April each year. It's the same day that William Shakespeare's birthday is celebrated. Now come join us where we go talk to an author who will give us an insight in the world of reading. I'm here with Rose, who's a local Australian author. Hello, Rose, how are you? I'm very good. I'm very good, thank you. So what inspired you to become an author? So who do you like reading? Well, I have a background in teaching before I retired, and one of the things I was involved in was teaching reading. And it was really apparent that the thing that engages kids and wanting to learn to read is having material that interests them. So when I had an opportunity to get involved with dinosaurs in Australia, I um, 
It's, it's actually quite funny because I think you get too much dinosaur dust up your nose and then you start to dream about dinosaurs and then before I knew it, I was writing about dinosaurs. So I'm writing about real dinosaurs and they're dinosaurs that the kids can Google, but they're also written in a kid-friendly manner because I know how kids read. I know what they like to read. That's really interesting. Um, coming back to books, why, why do you think that it's important for kids to read books? Oh, it's, the, it's the key to the future. You know, if you not only can read, but you enjoy reading, it opens so many doors in life. It's just so important that kids not only learn the technique, but they learn to enjoy reading. I see. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Now let's go talk to Muneeb, who will give us a teacher's perspective. We promote reading in schools by making it a part of our daily routine. The research tells us that reading regularly is essential for a child's cognitive development. So in our classroom, whenever students come in from a break, they know that they have to read silently for 10 minutes. I also make a habit of reading to them every single day. World Book Day is celebrated all over the world in different ways. At our school, we create a library display which showcases books from all over the world. And the day is really about giving students an opportunity to explore that space, finding a book that they can relate with and giving them the time to read it. Now that we know why reading is important, we should try and read more books that increase our knowledge. During this holy month of Ramadan, Muslims all around the world focus on one book, the Holy Quran. It was revealed in Arabic, but now it has been translated into countless of different languages. During this holy month, you should try to read and understand the Holy Quran so you can become an all-round better person. Jazakallah, Yasser. It is indeed very important for us to make sure we become regular in the recitation of the Holy Quran. And the month of Ramadan is a great time to get into the habit. Now it's time for us to hear what you had to say about this week's special topic. In this month of Ramadan, I have started to read the Holy Quran with translation. It provides me better understanding of Allah's message. When I know what is written in the Holy Quran, I will try to follow it easily. In Ramadan, I try to be very kind to my family. I try to be even kinder to them more than normally. Asalaamu Alaikum. In Ramadan, I'm going to start watching more MTA and I'm going to start reading all of the five daily prayers. In the month of Ramadan, I will read extra nawafil before prayer, read more of the Quran cream and of a morning to love it, and finally read more duas related to Ramadan. I read lots of Quran every day and I normally don't do that. I try to offer prayer in the mosque on time with my siblings and my dad. The day of Ramadan, I'm going to try and do some small prayers. Here's one I've learned. Rubana atina fit dunya hasanatu wa fil akhirati hasanatu wa kina adabanai. Assalamu alaikum everyone and Ramadan Mubarak. In this blessed month, I am reading more of the Holy Quran than usual. I am offering a waffle of prayers and with my parents, I am donating food and money to charities. May Allah accept our small efforts. Jazakallah. If you also would like to get involved, keep an eye out on our social media and send us your messages at roundup at mta.tv. We've almost reached the end of today's episode, but for our last report, we make a final stop over in Bangladesh, where Asif reports back to us what an entire day of Ramadan is like in Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm Asif Hassan, Amar Boyosh Noy Bochor. Sehidi Kawar Age. আমি ওজু করে বাবার সাথে তাহার জুত নামাজ আদায় করি টেবিলে খাবার প্রস্তুতের পর 
খাবার শুরু দোয়ার মাধ্যমে আমরা খাওয়া শুরু করি শেহরির পর আমি ও আমার ছোট বোন জাই নামাজ বিছাই এবং বাজামাত ফজরের নামাজ আদায় করি নামাজের পর আম্মু আমাকে পবিত্র কুরআন শরীফ করতে সাহায্য করে সারা দিন রোজা রাখার পর বিকেল বেলা আম্মু নানা রকম ইফতার বানানো শুরু করেন আমরা একসাথে ইফতারের দোয়া পরে ইফতার শুরু করি মহানবী হজরত মোহাম্মদ সাল্লাহ আলাইহি ওয়াসাল্লামের সুন্নত অনুযায়ী আমরা খেজুর খেয়ে রোজা ভাঙি আজ আমি বাবা মায়ের সাথে রোজা রেখে খুব আনন্দ বোধ করছি এবং অপেক্ষা করব সেই দিনের জন্য যে দিন আমি আমার বাবা মায়ের মতো রোজা রাখতে পারব Jazakallah Asif, that brings us to the end of the episode. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new from today's different segments. Until next week, Assalamu Alaikum.